I'm Rhonda Draculis with RK3 Designs and welcome to the second live that we've done on YouTube. Facebook we've done hundreds but this is our second time on YouTube so if we have technical difficulties hold on just oh. are we on? <laughs> I mean you're on. Okay uh, we if we have technical t difficulties guys it's because this is the only second time we've ever gone live on YouTube. All right so welcome um, this is uh, going to be a fun night. I'm going to give you, I may give you guys a bonus uh, tonight. We'll see how it goes. But um, I'm super excited. Kenny and I did this finish last night to kind of see how it goes, and we really liked it. So I'm super excited to be able to bring that to you. So as you all start to log in and as you start to join us, join us um, give us uh, an idea of where you guys are coming from. Let us know. Say hi. We love seeing where everybody's coming from. All right, so I'm going to tell you guys um, right off the bat, we are having some really, really high winds going on right now, and there's some big, big storms coming in. So if we have some interruption in our Internet, we are aware of that. So um, there's nothing really we can do about it. We live out in the country. We're kind of at the mercy of the weather gods so uh, anyway all right so what we're going to do tonight is a marble slash we're going to make it into a granite slash i don't know what we're going to do after that That's slash just, what slash whatever y'all want to do after we do the original or the uh, intended uh, finish so we're going to start off with some metallics we're going to uh, use two different metallics we're going to use pearl metallic and white metallic. Both of these are metallics that I sell on my website, and um, I really, really like them. So what we've done, we've mixed up pearl metallic, okay, which is a really pretty pearl color, all right, and we mixed up the white metallic. All right, so you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the two. Okay, now when we mix these up, because they are a powder, a lot of times when you mix your met uh, your metallics into your epoxy, if you don't mix it, sorry guys, my nose is itching. <laughs> sorry, if you don't mix it a um, hundred percent, you'll get these little fish eye things, kind of like little dry spots in brownies. So what we do. We've started, you can make a slurry with 91% isopropyl alcohol. You'll just mix that alcohol in with the mica powder. Or we have a product called um, Dispersion Fluid. This is now available on the website. I really like it. It, it literally just makes the, epox, uh, the mica powders like butter in the, uh, the epoxy. So I really, really like that. So what we've done, we have pearl and white, and then we have another cup of pearl and white. But what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to lighten the pearl, give it a little bit different shade, and I'm going to add a little tiny bit of the white opaque dye, just a drop. Because I don't want it to be a huge, oh, you wouldn't know I'd grab the wrong one. Hold on. Um, I don't want it to be a huge difference in the two sheens. I just want it to be a little bit so that you have a contrast. I probably put too much in there just now. And what will happen also if you put too much, it's going to take your metallic sheen away from you. So you have to be really careful. So can y'all see the difference in those two? I don't know if y'all can really tell. Yeah. A little bit. It's not that much different. Yeah. Though. Let me add just a tick more. Just a tick more. So you can see. One little drop more. That. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. All right. So now look at the difference. Oh, yeah. Now you can see it. See? Can y'all see the difference? All right. Okay. So then we have that. And then I'm going to come in on the white. And I'm going to tone that white down just a little bit. And I'm going to come in with Navajo white. You can also use heirloom white. It's just an off-white, basically. Mm 
just going to put a tiny bit in there. Again, if you put too much in there, you're going to kill your metallic. Somebody's at our door. Oh, <laughs> Leslie and them just got through riding motorcycles. Uh, okay, so let me see the difference in the two. Yeah, so it's not a whole lot of difference. Just a little bit. I may add just a tick more. Turn it around, turn around. Say, <laughs> hi, Leslie, motorcycle woman. <laughs> so I want to do that to her. You know, I'm going to do that to her? I was going to do it to her. I was going to throw her under the bus. <laughs> All right, say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Everybody say hi to Leslie. She just got back from riding motorcycles. Okay, so then I have a small cup of diamond dust. You got to have the diamond dust. Now, if you want, and I did this in the original recipe, is I actually added a little bit of diamond dust to the two mica powders that I put the white dye in just to kind of boost the sparkle again since I kind of knocked it down with the dye. But that's completely up to you. All right, so let me tell you what we've done to our board. So we've painted the sample board with a cream kind of off-white color, uh, almost probably the same color as the Navajo white. Then we came through and fogged our edges with the nutmeg, all right? Rust-Oleum nutmeg. The reason we did that is because you're gonna see, once we pour this, it's gonna give a really cool effect. It's gonna make the edges almost look like there's an undertone shadow. And it's really pretty. It's almost like tile. A lot of times you see your tile will have kind of a, a darker edge around it. Um, I could see this looking amazing on a countertop. So that's what we did. Now, if you don't want that shadow look, then you don't have to fog your edges. Uh, just make sure that the paint that you paint your substrate is going to closely kind of be in the same family that your pearl's in because as that epoxy breaks over right here, what's gonna happen is your edges are gonna be really thin, um, so you'll be able to see whatever color is underneath there. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take the pearl, and we're just gonna lay it out. So I'm going, I'm doing, I'm using the Stone Coat countertop epoxy. Everybody knows that's the product of my choice. I'm a distributor also. Um, I used the product for about two and a half years before we ever became a distributor. Um, so I'm not, I don't use it because I sell it. I sell it because I use it. Rhonda, where are you getting your gloves from? I actually got these gloves. Uh, Michelle Ellsworth from uh, Desert Daisy Design. She actually had her pharmacist order these. So I'm not really sure exactly where she gets them. I can take a picture of them and put them in the comments after the live and let you know. I'm not really sure where she gets them. So hopefully, Mike, that'll help you out. Yeah. She'll tell you later on that. Yeah, so I love these gloves. I really, really like them. Okay, so now I'm coming down with the white opaque. I mean, I'm sorry, the white metallic. And I'm going to leave some of that in the cup. All right, now we're going to come in with the pearl that's mixed with the dye. You can see how that's definitely a different shade. Leave a little bit of that in the cup. And here comes the white with the heirloom. Spray paint, kind of just filling in the gaps now. All right, now if it's cool in your area, you're going to want to torch your resin a little bit before you start melding them together. A little booger right there. Just going to help move it a little bit. Now I'm going to meld these a little bit before I add our diamond dust. 
because I don't want my diamond dust to sink and be swallowed up by the other colors. All right, now there's two ways you can do this. You can come in here and cross hatch with a paintbrush, which I, I, I like that because it kind of gives me a cool look. Or you can come in with a Bondo spreader and do the same thing. What you don't want to do is over meld so that you end up with just one big blob of a color. You want to have distinctions in your epoxy and in your colors. You want to be able to see. So you're going to do half and half? You're half going to do it all with the paintbrush? I'll just do it in the paintbrush. I mean, it's, well, I guess I can show them. Well, it's going to give it a different effect. Yeah. So if you use the, the Bondo spreader, you're very lightly, just use two fingers, because if you grab a hold of it like this, you're going to move too much product. So just two fingers, and you're just every different way, every which way, you're not going to hit it the same place twice. This is how I meld a lot of my colors. The thing about using a Bondo spreader, you're 100% guaranteed not to get a bristle hair in there. All right. All right, so kind of go back, tap your any kind of uh, surface tension that you may have. I'm just going to run my hand along the edges. Push that product over. Now I can't see my edges because a little bit. Yep. I can feel them. All right. You can already see how that fogging of the edge is given a really cool effect. What is that called in the photography world? Is it vignette or vignette or something? Which gives that shadow, <clears throat> that shadow. <coughs> so Excuse me. the size of boards that we use, it just all depends on a lot of these boards that we use for videos, they're um, Scraps. drops yeah. from other projects. So they go <clears throat> from anywhere from two, well, about this size, this is 20, this was 12 and a half by 49. So basically what I do is I go out into the shop and I find scrap pieces and that's what we do our lives on. Now, when we're in class, our sample boards that we do in class are 12 by 16 sample boards and they're half inch MDF. And those are the, when you come to our class, you'll do sample boards and those will be yours. You do a bunch of them and those will be yours to take home with you. Um, all right, so now I went in and I put the diamond dust. And again, you can come in with your brush. Now let me show you another really kind of cool technique too, um, because all of this is gonna really change as we go. You can come in here and you can chop. And if you chop, you're gonna, this brush is gonna make a really cool design. I'm not over chopping. Yeah, we're using three ounces per square foot. Yes, and I also like to leave big chunks of the diamond dust so you have big areas. All right, so I'm going to do that with the chop. This I'm going to actually cross hatch. And Tater Tot's eating dinner right now. Uh, yeah, Tater Tot just got fed. He's in his stall. He's uh, getting ready for the storm that's coming in. He's already starting to get his winter hair. I don't know why it still was 90 degrees today in Texas. I talked to Brett Cunningham. I don't know if he's on here yet, but he said it was 28 degrees this morning. I'm like, uh, that's a big old hard no for me. Where what are you looking for? The Bondo spreader. All right, so the second part of it was done with the brush. You can see how it just kind of melds your diamond dust out a little softer. And then I'll do the last one with the Bondo spreader. All right. 
What do y'all think about that? Isn't that pretty? All right, so we've got the, the brush. The brush is really pretty when you chop it because I intentionally left big areas of the diamond dust. So you have like little pockets. When you use the brush, it's a little softer. Your diamond dust kind of gets melded in there. And then with your Bondo spreader, it's kind of in between the brush and um, cross hatching the brush and chopping the brush. All right, so unless I absolutely have to, I don't want to put much heat on this finish. I don't want all of that epoxy to go backwards and start getting super fluid. So what's happening right now is the mica powders that we've mixed up in the epoxy are falling through the epoxy and falling down. So what we're going to have to do here in just a minute is kind of wake it up just a little bit. But meanwhile, I have a surprise for you guys. So we're going to let this sit for just a minute. And I, I didn't want y'all just to be watching it set while we were on a live. So I'm going to do a bonus for y'all tonight. One of our biggest videos to go um, on our YouTube channel is our foils. Um, and I, I've had so many people ask me about the foils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give y'all a quick little lesson in foils. All right, so what I've done is I have a lamp here, just an old lamp that was given to me. And I painted it black. This had a design on it, okay? So I painted it black and I just used... Rhonda, say it again. You were breaking up. Uh, about what? The foils? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do foils. I'm going to give you guys a little quick lesson on doing foils. Sorry about the, the reception do, uh, uh, because of the weather. It's just, it's terrible. Um, so what I've done is I've taken a lamp that was given to me. I painted it black. And then what I did, and I just used chalk paint, just Dixie Belle. Actually, it's not even a chalk paint. It's a, it's a Dixie Belle. And I painted it black. Then I came over with a foil adhesive. Can you come in here? This foil adhesive is by far, and I'll go toe to toe with anybody, the best foil adhesive on the market. Um, I like it because you can brush it on, roll it on, let it sit about 45 minutes, and it's going to get tacky. But once it gets tacky, it's never going to dry out on you. It's going to stay tacky for one day or three years until I put something over it, something being a foil. So the way that you check and to see if it's ready is you touch it, and as long as it doesn't come off on your finger, you're ready to go. So this is ready to go. All right, so my foil comes on a row or roll and if you go to my website and you click on affiliate vendors there's an affiliate link to artistic painting studio Jennifer Ferguson she's a dear friend of mine she's got some of the best foils all over the United States she has got more foils than you can imagine uh, this happens to be the same foil that we did in our bathroom on our countertops in our shower so I love this foil. So we're gonna take it, I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate here, and I'm gonna cut it. Now I like a rustic look. I like that vintage look that looks like it's kinda worn out. So I'm gonna crinkle my foil. Also that gives it a little bit of body and it's a little easier to handle. And then I'm just going to put my, let's see how, put my foil. I'm just going to lay it down. Now you want to make sure that you put the ugly side to the glue, not the pretty side. All right, then I'm going to come in with a cloth. Hey, 
Why don't you come over here on the front so I can... Oh, I guess I can do that. Well, because I'm in my shorts and flip-flops. I didn't want They're anybody not gonna to see, it, but... see my shorts and flip-flops. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to lightly rub. Now, what I don't want to do is rub right next to that edge. Because if I rub right next to the edge, what's going to happen is that straight line is going to transpose on to my finish. So I'm going to leave a very soft edge. Also, what I don't want to do is circles real hard because that pattern will also show up in my finish. All right, so all these little air bubbles that you see, that's the texture I'm going for. I really like that. Now I can test it, and I can see that it's coming off, but it's not coming off a lot. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to put it back, and now I'm going to get my little scrub brush. Now I'm going to scrub it. Again, you don't want to go in circles, and you don't want to go all the way to the edge. because that's gonna transpose. Now this is more of a matte foil. This is not a real high shiny foil, but you can always put a high gloss sealer, which I'm gonna actually put the ultimate top coat over this and bring it up to a higher gloss. Maybe, I might keep it matte. I'm not real sure what I'm gonna do yet. All right, so now I'm gonna pull it and there you go. And now see all the little, I don't know if y'all can see it. Can you see all the little yeah. lines? Yes. I love that. I want it to look like that. I want it to have that vintage look. Now, if I didn't, I could come back and stretch that back out. Go over it. And take a lot of those lines out. All right, so. All right, so we have this. Isn't that pretty? That's what it looked like before, and that's what it looks like now. All right, so let's get another piece. Do you have any questions? No. And like I said, these foils come in hundreds of patterns. And I mean, I've, I've foiled ceiling fans. I've foiled, you name it, I have foiled it. All right, so now I'm going to overlap. And I'm going to do the same thing. No, that's not going in Kendra's salon. <laughs> no, she's everything she's got is bright white with high end sparkles and so. All right. Now let me show you something. I already have foil here, so it's no longer sticky. All right. So if I happen to go. See how this, the, the foil won't stick if I go all the way to the edge? See how it's popping up? It's popping up because there's no foil for that to stick. So I'm not as worried about going all the way to the edge if I'm going over something that's already has foil on it. All right. There you go. And then I have a little bit right here extra if I have any if I can feel it tacky. How much pressure are you putting on there? Not a whole lot. Just enough to push. Just enough to kind of kind of push that to on stick there. stick it, right? Yeah. So, there you go. Voila. I'll put some UTC on there, or you can even put a spray uh, polyacrylic. You could put any kind of sealer that you want. Um, Obviously, you can put epoxy over the top of it if it weren't a cylinder. Or if I had something to spin it, I could spin it kind of like we do a tumbler. So, 
Tell them what the difference between the thick and the thin um, dispersion. Dispersion. All right. So your thin dispersion is it just kind of just what it says. It's thin. It, uh, it you just add your your uh, micas in there makes kind of like a slurry, and boom, you have um, you know you have your mixture. Your thick is you can kind of like make a paste. Now I'm not as high on the thick as I am on the thin because I just haven't used the thick as much. Um, I'm sure I could, uh, if I wanted to, I could take some of that mica powder, mix it with the thick, put it in a jar, and then it's already ready whenever I need it, just scoop it out and put it in there. Now I do know that you do have to load up quite a bit of your mica powder um, to, to get that same intensity when you use the thick. but. You guys might love it if you want to make some ahead of time and store it. That's, that's the way you can do it. All right, so I want you guys to come look at this. Now, this is what I really like about the thin dispersion. I've done nothing to this except chop it. Look what the dispersion is doing already. It's causing some really cool, cool designs. All we've done to this point is mix it in. And it's already causing some really cool effects. Now, you can get too much dispersion in your epoxy. If you do, uh, it just takes longer for that to set up. I used one capful of the dispersion. I used one, whoops, <laughs> I used one capful uh, to one pretty good size scoop. Um, probably. I had uh, powder about to right here, and that's, that's what I used. Okay, so well, this could be a finish all on its own, Erica Bauer. And, um, but we're going to go to the next step. So here we go. Now, this is a marble. All right, this is beautiful marble. I could see this in a high-end bathroom, a powder room, any kind of fancy little thing like that. I could see that very easily. Now we're going to make it more of a granite, all right? So I'm going to take the white and the heirloom, and we're going to fog. And I'm not going to fog solid. I don't want 100% coverage. Some areas I'm going to fog very lightly. Some areas I'm going to put more opaque, all right? So I'm going to come in. That's with the white. Now I'm going to come in. Now y'all may decide not to even do the white. If you just wanted a little softer fracturing, you wouldn't even have to do the bright white. You could do just the heirloom. Now this is the mica powder, pearl mica powder mixed with the isopropyl alcohol. Now, I'm not putting a ton of alcohol, guys. Okay, you have to be really careful with how much alcohol you put on the surface. If you get too much, your pattern is going to look really pretty for a little bit, and then it's, go it's going to um, all run off. And another thing you have to do is don't judge it immediately. You have to have time for the epoxy, the spray paint, and this alcohol all to do its thing. So I usually wait a good 10 minutes or so, come back, check it out, make some adjustments if I need to. Now if I come back and decide to refracture I'm not going to do it with the pearl metallic. I'm going to do it with clear alcohol because I'm not going to want any more metallic on this surface. I already have quite a bit. So if I need to refracture something, like I said, I'll come in with just the clear, uh, clear alcohol. All right. Looks way cool. Really looks cool. What do y'all think about that? So you can see how just fracturing on top 
really does change and give it a neat look. And I love the darkness around the edges. It just, it just gives it one more layer of interest. So what do y'all think about that? You like it? Mike said you got this. Mike! Hi, Mike. Well, thank you, Mike. I kind of learned from this dude that kind of knows what he's talking about. So, um, all right. So what do y'all think? Y'all like that? I'm used to telling you guys give me a thumbs up, but y'all can't do that on, on uh, YouTube. All right, so we're going to let this set. But while we're letting it set, I'm going to run some veins, all right? So I'm going to pull some of the drips, and I'm going to run some really thin, fun veins across the surface, being really careful not to make it just X's. We don't want to just have X's going all over our piece. Whoop. And you can blob it ever so often. Now, what's going to happen with these thin, thin lines is as this continues to move, they'll become very, very faint and almost look like small little fracture lines. I'm also going to come, I have a little bit of pure white mica powder and I'm going to go across with that. Now, if you let the epoxy set up in the cup a little longer than what I've done, and then you do your drips, it'll be a little thicker, and they'll be a lot easier. Whoop! It'll be a lot easier to um, string that across. So that's really pretty. And here in just a little bit, that's going to be very, very soft. And it's going to just have that real soft mic mica fracture. All right, what do y'all think about that? Y'all like that? Again, it's kind of hard to, to tell you guys what, color what it's going to look. Uh, I actually used the drips that came off the board. I used the drips. And then I also used uh, whatever little bit of white metallic. But you can use it. You can use any of these cups. Right. Anything that you have in the cup, you, you can uh, drag across there. All right, what do y'all think about that? How about doing a vein? Do you guys want to try a vein? I'm not real, I mean like a big vein. I'm not really a huge fan of big veins uh, in granite, but hey, it's live. We've only been on for 30 minutes. 32 minutes. 32 minutes. So y'all want to do that? Um, what if we put, if we come through with nutmeg and, and we'll get some other dark, a little bit darker colors and we do a vein across the front. How about that? Y'all want to do that? Yes, yes. No, no. Yes, yes. Um, I need to get a heat gun really quick, hook it up, and then we'll get started on that. Oh, I tell you what else you can do, guys. This looks really cool. If you'll take your mica powder, and this is the mica powder that's mixed with the pearl metallic, you can also really do some cool veins. Or They're not really going to be veins. They're, they're going to be more, um, I guess, just visual. Maybe a fracture? Yeah, it's just more visuals for your eyes. Now, you can also do this before you fog, and it looks beautiful. But I'm just going to take this, and I'm just going to shoot it. You want to get your sprayer where it shoots in a fine line. And I'm just going to go right across the, the piece. You can see it right here. All right, let me grab some colors. Uh, let's see, we'll do a khaki. We'll do that white. We'll do a dark brown. How about that? All right, so while Kenny shows you all that, I'm going to get the heat gun. All righty. Okay, so let's think about this. I'm going to start off with um, the nutmeg. 
First of all, what I like to do is before I put any, any paint on my stick, I like to visualize what I'm looking at. So let's just say this was a long countertop. And like I said, I'm not a huge fan of a big vein running through there because then if, if you get your top really, really busy, then if you have a lot of appliances and stuff, your countertops can get really busy. But I'm a huge fan for doing them maybe on an island so it, and then maybe jumping the island and doing a little bit on the countertops just to kind of make it all flow. But I'll take a stick without anything on it and I'm just gonna kind of think a little bit. I never go from corner to corner, all right? That's visually not natural. So I try to make it as much as a natural look as I can. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna draw. And don't get crazy, don't try to make your vein real wiggly, I guess you would, that's not lack of a better term, because we can do that with a heat gun. So I'm just going to run it across there, and then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to have a little kicker. And I'm going to run that one that way. Um, okay, let's just work on that. We may add one in a minute. All right, so if I didn't like that, I could just basically re-spritz my surface, maybe add a little bit of spray paint, and you would never even see that. But I, I like how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some color. Now, when you start adding color to your vein, be very careful and don't add too much paint at one time because you need to be able to work that paint in to the epoxy. You don't wanna do this. Let me show you what you don't wanna do. You don't want to be very careful and let it sit on the surface like that, all right? You want to take that and work it down into the epoxy because in here in just a minute, when we get ready to manipulate it with the heat gun, you'll see how we can do that. Now, I'm going to go for a very transparent vein. I don't want this to be in your face, knock you out vein. This is just gonna be kind of a, a very soft, natural looking vein. Now this top vein, I want to be a little quieter. I don't want it to be the attention getter. All right, so we're gonna make that bottom vein a little bit more bold. All right, we'll get it a little more color here. You can also do your stick a little flatter and it'll give a little bit different look as well. Now I am using the craft coat tonight instead of the regular stone coat countertop epoxy. Um, I really like the craft coat when I'm developing finishes. For one, it's got a little shorter open time, especially uh, compared to the art coat, which has a little, quite a bit longer, which I love. But this enables me to kind of see how it's gonna look when it starts to set up. All right, so that was the nutmeg. Now I'm gonna come in with dark brown. I don't think I shook it very good. Oh, well, we got a dud. Hold on. Hey guys, I was gonna give y'all a pro tip here. If you write the date that you buy these cans from Home Depot, if you'll write the date of the can when you bought it, Home Depot will honor up to 90 days that you can return your paint if your sprayer quits working. Um, so just FYI. All right. Now we're gonna come in with a little bit of the darkness. Now I don't want that dark to take over. All right, so I'm not gonna get crazy with that dark brown. I really wanna accent this V. So I'm gonna come in a little darker with that V right there. Oh yeah, I like that.
See, I'm really kind of making this bottom vein be my focal vein instead of that top vein. How about that? Oh, yeah. That's pretty. I'll run a little line of brown. I don't want to make it up here all by itself. Oh, I like that little bit. I'm even going to come out with a little kicker like this. A little bit of brown. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so now let's lighten, lighten it up. Now I'm on nervous mic band out there. Because he tells me in every vein you need to put a light black. and a dark, black and a white. Black and white. Yeah, well, I'm not going to put black, but I did that dark brown. That's going to kind of take my black. All right, so I am going to. I think black would look good. You think black would look good? Uh, I took my white cap. So, you know what? Let's do Navajo white. Let's get that in there. Little bit. Now, white will take over your piece very quickly, guys. So, be be easy on your white. We're just kind of highlighting. Oops, that's dark. I've got a light hand. All right. Now, we can add all kind of colors to this. It was Luke. Oh, that was Luke. All right. Okay. Hi, Luke. Luke's my buddy. All right. I'm going to add a little bit of khaki, and then we're going to get going on the next step. Now, these colors, if you notice, I am just layering and layering and layering and layering. <laughs> Did you say Larry? Larry, layering. <laughs> layer, layer. Maybe I need to have a little swig. Hold on. Mm. Layering. All right, so look at this. This is pretty. Isn't that pretty? All right, so now what I want to do is I want to take that and I want to open it up and make it very transparent. So I'm going to come straight over the top with the heat gun. Now you notice I'm not coming from the side because I don't want that vein to move left to right. I just want it to open up. And as it opens up, it's going to get a little more transparent and look a little more soft. And it just, to me, makes it look so natural. Like it's just cut out of a piece of slab. Now this piece- Like it looks like it's all natural. Like it's all natural. As yep, that- Yep, I'm filming. As that vein starts to open- The one and open, only. Who is that asking you that? Mike. So as this vein starts to open up, you just follow your heat gun. Let me show you what happens. Now I'm gonna mess up my vein just so I can show y'all. Oh, hell. <laughs> if you come to the side and you try to move that vein, watch what happens. See how you get that, that little wrinkle it's like that? It's not really that? that bad though. No, but, but I, I don't wanna mess up. It's not what you're looking up, for. Right, I don't wanna mess up any of this design that's out here. So that's why I come straight over the top and I move it. And as my epoxy starts to open, I move my gun. Now, this is super important, guys. You have to pay attention to the temperature of your epoxy. If I get this too hot, it gets very fluid and I lose control. I don't like losing control. It's not my style. So keep an eye on it. If it starts to get too hot, back off. You can always come back. All right. So I'll. I'm starting to get a little warm. I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to work on this top. Now, this top vein, what I want to do, I'm going to make it so transparent that it's going to be kind of a second thought. Let's see if we can do that. 
So I'm going to come up. And I'm really going to open that vein up this time. Really, really open it so it almost disappears. It almost kind of fades into the stone. There, I like that. That's cool. Cool, 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 cool. Got a little booger right there. Another little booger right there. All right. So what do y'all think about that? Y'all like that? Now, what you don't want to do also, if you want to come in now and you want to add a little bit of an accent color, don't do it when your epoxy's hot. If you come in and try to add a detail and your epoxy's hot, it's just going to really run and you're not going to like the effect. Uh, also, if you take your heat gun and you come over the top and you get really close, what, that's, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of push that epoxy out so much that when you take the gun away, it's all going to run back in. So you don't want to get too aggressive with your heat gun. You want to go very slow and 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 really have a purpose as you go down all right so i'm thinking i want to come in here very lightly I'm not going to do the italian drip i'm going to do the italian flip sprit the flip <laughs> the italian flip so i want to refracture now you notice i didn't spray any more alcohol i mean i didn't spray any more spray paint but that spray paint can still be activated. By just flicking it a little bit. Again, you don't want to do this if your epoxy is hot either. And do me a favor, don't torch after you put alcohol in there. You may lose a few eyebrows. All right. What y'all think about that? Cool beans. All right, so I really like how that dark fogging on the edge, creating that undertone and creating that, that shadow, really is playing in to mm -hmm. that vein. All right, so what do y'all want to do? Give me some hints. Y'all want to add something? Uh, what do y'all want? This is y'all's now. Now it's your turn. What do you What do you want to do? Now remember, I've got craft coat on here, so it's starting to kind of set up a little bit. Um, you know what? I'm gonna try. Is Andrew? No, he's and not Kel on here. Andrew's not on here. All right. So Andrew, a while back, and it might have been actually it might have been Brett. I can't remember. They had me do some veins with. Oh, with the brush. With the brush. Y'all remember that? It, it was Andrew. It was Andrew. It might be a little too sticky for me to do that, but we're going to try it. All right, so I, I primed my brush. Now I'm going to come in here with some nutmeg. And I'm going to kind of push my brush because I want to kind of get my tip to be kind of funkified. A little dirty. A little, well, but I want it to be kind of bristly. Does that make sense? This, if you do with a, with a chip brush, works really well, too. I don't know if this is going to work with um, this setting up. All right, so I'm going to kind of bring it across. Add some more color. That was khaki. I'm going to add some white, heirloom white. Do you have any more diamond dust on the vein? Uh, I may have a little bit. We can add that. Ooh, that'd be pretty. Who said mm -hmm. that? Nikki. Nikki, that would. You want to put the diamond dust in the actual vein? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, yeah, that would be pretty. I'll do that just here in just a minute. All right, so I'm gonna open this up a little bit. All 
All right, then we're going to hit it with some alcohol. Yeah, it's, see, it's a little bit too set up. to get that, the real look that I was going for. But it is, look at that. Yeah, but it's not really what I was it's going not, for. Yeah, it's not moving as much. So that's kind of a neat little look. Like right here, look at that. Isn't that pretty? I like that. All right, so Nikki, here we go. This one's for you, babe. Here we go. Ooh, it's starting to set up in my cup. Now, I'm not going to manipulate that because this is all going to still keep running. Now, anytime you add epoxy to a vein, it's going to cause that vein to get a little wider because that epoxy is still trying to self-level. Now, the little tiny bit that I'm putting in there is not going to really make a difference. Oh, wow. That's pretty. That is pretty. That does. It's yeah. I just kind of gave it a a quartz. Yeah, kind of a quartz look. All right, cool. What y'all think about that? So, could y'all see this in a kitchen? I could see all of the countertops like this, minus the vein. And then if they had a big island, man, I could see like a beautiful vein kind of cutting through that island and maybe skipping into part of the countertops. Wow, that would be amazing. All right, guys. What y'all think? Y'all like that? I like it. All right. This was fun. Okay, so a couple of announcements. Um... Obviously, we our new website is up and going. We've added a few new products. We've added the dispersions on there. Um, so they'll be available. And um, I've added a couple of, I think, one more mica color that I didn't realize wasn't on there. It's on there now. And um, remember, guys, when you order from us, if my program overestimates your shipping, I will reimburse your shipping. So don't freak out. Um, anything over $5, I reimburse you guys. So I'm not trying to get, get y'all with shipping because it's high enough as it is right now. Uh, my goal is to get the product in your hand so that you can see how awesome this product is. It is so much fun. I had a lady in today, I have to tell you this story really quick. I had a lady come in today and she didn't know about the craft coat. Um, and she said, well, I'm ready to step up and start using the really good stuff with Stone Coat. She goes, I've been using this stuff <clears throat> from a big box store. I'm not going to name it. And she said, it, I just can't get anything to look like what your videos look like. So she bought some craft coat, and she said she was going to run straight home, and she was going to work on some projects. Well, she called me right before we went live, and she said, oh, my gosh. She goes, I cannot even believe. She goes, this is your economical line, and it is so much better than what she had been using. She goes, I cannot wait to start using even the regular stone coat and the art coat. So testimony from her, um, if you're looking for an uh, economical way to practice, guys, grab that craft coat. <laughs> this is what you can do with it. It's amazing. All right, guys. Uh, two thousandth online customer remember like we, we did the one thousandth they won 250 dollars worth of product our two thousandth customer is going to win five hundred dollars worth of products um on our website so i'm super excited so start kind of watching start ordering and see what number you pop up i think we're about Hmm, maybe 400 or so away from that 2,000 mark. So, uh, any questions, Kenny? No questions? All right, guys. Well, it was good to see y'all. Thank you for hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Check out our website. 
rk3designs.com. Also, we have posted our 2022 class schedule and our February class is already booking up like crazy. That's our pro class. So our first class of 2020 will be our pro class. It'll be in February. Um, and then we'll do a pro class every other month. And then the months to fill in, we'll do our 101 class and our master's class. So check out our website for detailed descriptions of what each one of those class offers. Uh, and also remember guys, once you come to our class, you are part of our family. So go ahead and tell them about the art coat, the difference between the art, oh, the okay. countertop and the craft. Okay, I'm gonna take these off because I keep touch, touching my hair and Kendra's gonna get after me because I don't have a clip in my hair. Um, okay, so the, the regular epoxy, the stone coat, uh, high heat, it says on the label, high heat, um, scratch resistant, that's the regular stone coat. That in itself has a good amount of UV protection. Huge scratch resistance and heat resistance. So our art coat takes that and moves it up here. It's got probably the most UV protection of any epoxy on the market. And I'll go toe to toe with anybody about that because I've been doing white countertops and we've had such great success. Um, you can also, I highly recommend, and, and actually we don't even do countertops anymore unless we put the ultimate top coat on there. Um, that even has more UV protection and the, the scratch and heat resistance on that product alone is amazing. So um, the difference would be if you're gonna use white, if you're gonna do white, like if I were gonna do this in a home, I would use the art coat because it's a lighter color. Uh, I just want to ensure that the uh, ambering is gonna be kept to a minimal and that's why I would use the art coat. Uh, your darker colors uh, are fine with your regular stone coat, dirty pores, things like that where you have some of the darker colors, you're fine. Uh, the art coat does have a little bit more open time. I've actually worked the art coat for almost two hours. So it's got a great open time to be able to manipulate your veins and stuff. So I guess, I hope I answered your question. All right, so then our craft coat basically is a step below that. Uh, not really uh, high UV protection uh, not really high heat, but it is a great product to learn your technique and to master your skill. And I cannot tell you enough, guys. This is one of my pet peeves is you have to practice this, okay? Don't watch one video and then go do, you know, 120 square feet in your kitchen. You need to practice. You need to learn how the epoxy moves, how temperatures affect your epoxy. Um, learn that and that way you're going to go in with confidence and that's the thing you don't it, it's really scary to go into a project and you don't have that confidence behind you because you haven't practiced so practice 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 and practice some more uh, okay anything else that's it all right guys thank you love y'all i will see y'all next week remember we have videos released on youtube every thursday and i appreciate your support go subscribe our numbers are jumping through the roof, and I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you next week. All right? See ya. Bye. Adios. And Bobby, practice makes permanent, not perfect. <laughs> Later. Okay. Bye.